Yo, sup, swag? Yeah, you already know what time it is, man. It's your boy, KLR, aka KL Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, we about to react to another Matt B. Great reaction, man. Deion Sanders wasn't lying. Sheesh. Y'all already know how swag get down, bro. All I ask is that you guys comment, like, subscribe to the channel, man. We on the road to 10K, bro. Look, and also, you guys, um, I know I'm in a whole different setting or whatever like that, but the grind do not stop, bro. I'm going to keep posting, even if it's a vlog or whatever like that. We going to keep talking that shit and keeping it real. Let's get into it. I still for a lot of me though can't believe Deion Sanders did this and the funny part about all of it is And also you guys if you guys hear me sniffing or whatever I don't do that shit so you guys hear me sniffing or whatever I do not do that See my nose running and shit so I do not do that shit Wait one second let me get a uh, napkin bro or something like that bro because the vent is like next to me or whatever is blowing and I need the light so you know I can react and y'all can see hot you know so yeah bro y'all see my nose running so yeah, one second. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. It wasn't what? lying. He told us this, this was gonna, gonna happen. happen. What? Let's see what, what he wasn't lying about. Ladies Wait. and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope you all had a great and fantastic Thursday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. And now that I think about it, how long has it been since we've made a Colorado or Deion Sanders video or even talked about him in general? Are we coming up on a month now? It's had to be at least, what, three, four weeks? I don't know exactly how long it's been, but there's one thing for certain. It's been a minute, and for obvious reasons, because their year, it didn't really end on a high note. Definitely, the definitely. The season was very, very, very bad. How bad, you may ask? Well, they didn't even win a game. They ended on a six-game losing streak. They Not did. exactly what you like to see, but hey, it is what it is. On the grand scheme of things, they definitely improved because the year before, they only won one game. And in half of the games that you guys see, they definitely should could have won. It was just stupid calls, stupid defense of calls. Um, they couldn't get stops. Uh, you guys really look at the record. The record, you know, well, the score or whatever like that wasn't all that bad except with Oregon, you know. So they're going to be better, way, way better yeah, next year. But I think I see for most people when I say this, it was still somewhat a disappointment. Well, fast forward in time to our current time and date with all this stuff going on in the transfer portal, Deion Sanders. He just did something that, number one, I can't believe he did this. And number two, I don't know how he did this. You can say what you want about Coach Prime, but good gosh almighty, this man has a knack for recruiting. That is his biggest strong suit, at least in my humble opinion, and he put it on full display yet again. But here's the kicker with all of this, and we're going to talk about it in tonight's video. He didn't get some big-time offensive player or some flashy player. No, 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 no. Because remember last year, what was he bringing into Colorado? All these safeties, cornerbacks, wide receivers, it was. Backs, quarterbacks, and etc. Well, now he's like, you know what? We got enough of those guys. Let's get some of the big boys. In tonight's video, we got a couple other minor Okay, I see what he's trying to do. Apparently and allegedly, there's some new bombshell breaking news coming out about the CFP committee. I had a couple people send this to me, like always. If you ever want me to talk about something in a video, all you got to do is tweet it to me. More times than not, we're going to talk about it. I don't even know what it's going to be because okay. I'm saving my reaction to it for this video. Buckle in, okay. strap up, get you your favorite meal or snack you like to eat when you watch a video because trust me, I do the same thing. And real quick, we were trying to hit 310,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Yeah, I'm not going to pitch too hard, you know what I'm about to say. If you like the content, consider subscribing. If you don't like it, well, don't subscribe. Simple as that. But all right, man, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now that I'm afraid I do. Yes. yes. Show your daughter how much you love her with this beautiful gift. It says. All right, first things first. We're going to start with this because I've had a bunch of people send this to me and I haven't even spoken on it. Don't worry, though, it does involve Coach Prime. And he was asked if the committee made the right decision about putting in Alabama over Florida State. And he talked about it a little more, but here's the only thing you need to know. He stated, quote, unquote, you're not going to leave Georgia and Alabama out. It ain't no playoff if you do that. Now, I do want to also throw in there, he did state a main reason they put Alabama in over Florida State is because it's about the business and it's about the money. That's I feel true. like that should be self-explanatory. If that's you put true. Alabama in, duh, that's going to generate way more revenue than if you were to put Florida State in. And, of course, you're going to have some people say, oh, well, Matt's got SEC bias, and if you want to say that, that's fine. But, yeah, you got to put in either Georgia or Alabama. There's no way he's going to leave out the SEC. No way. Right now, as to where it stands, Alabama and Georgia are better football teams than Florida State. 
And hold on, hold on, hold on. Isn't the line for the Georgia Florida State game something like 14 points? You know what? Why not pull it up real quick? Yeah, I got to pull it up right here. It's 14 points, but that's not my point. The point is, Georgia and Alabama are better football teams than Florida it's State, true. and it's not close. The bottom line is, you put in Florida State, you're going to lose way more money. And the, I think what it was is the committee was scared to do what they did last year because we all saw what happened with TCU and Georgia. You could also point to that. TCU getting blown out the way they did affected FSU a lot. You got to think about it. The national championship game, they're selling advertisers what? It's probably... Two million dollars for a 30 second ad it's got to be something crazy like that and the last thing you want to happen is for it to be a blowout and then the advertisers they get pissed off because yeah. when you piss off these advertisers yeah you had them this year but they may not come back next year but with alabama michigan texas and washington getting in i think all the advertisers are going to be more than happy to sponsor that whoever makes a championship that is the business side of college football and it is the reality but take the business side out i still think they got it right speaking of the college football playoff in the committee that leads us into our next topic perfectly i had a couple people tag me in this earlier today and i'm just gonna read it off you're gonna get my live reaction because i haven't even taken a look at it i saved it to my bookmarks on twitter and that's about it breaking bombshell evidence has come out linking the cfp committee's head chair to espn the head of the college football playoff committee is nc state wolfpack ad boo corrigan which we already know corrigan's already been criticized for his bias against fsu as a fellow acc athletic director okay. now here's where it gets even weirder in all caps Ooh, what about s boo's brother is tim corrigan and the VP of production at ESPN. Continuing along here, given ESPN's close ties to the SEC, it would have benefited the company to steal Florida State's playoff spot and give it to Alabama. It's already troubling how closely intertwined the CFP committee and ESPN are, are organizations. I guess that was a misspelling there or something. Anyways, continuing along, but we didn't know there were family ties between the executive. All right, this is just some straight up bull crap. I ain't gonna. No, bull literally, crap. it, it sounds right, like bullshit. You want to complain about FSU come in and have your conspiracy theories about it on Sunday, Monday, and even Tuesday? Okay, I get it. Some people were highly upset about, it, but it is Thursday. I can't be the only one who is sick and tired of people still talking about this move it is on. what it is bro and i know that some people are gonna be saying well matt it's easy for you to say move on your team got in if you want to say that last year i thought we should have got in and i was highly upset that tcu got in over us but you didn't see me talking about it for the next four to five six days i moved on yeah i was upset the day is. of and the day after but it's like all right let's just try to get in next year Maybe it's just me, but this right here, what you see on your screen here, I think it's reaching. You're reaching too much. Thank y'all for sending this to me, but we are going to move on to the main topic of the main encore. Main reason you got onto this video: what is going on with Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and Colorado? I said Coach Prime and Deion Sanders. It's the same guy, but you get what I'm trying to say. Basically, what I feel like he about to say is that they got a line. Well, alignment. Deion Sanders knows that he need a line. He get all them damn niggas. You know, athletes, you know, that can, you know, play DB, corner. You know, he got a bunch of ballers, you know, that can play corner, wide receiver, running backs. But he forgot one thing. You need a line for your son. Why don't y'all take a look at this? Yesterday, the five-star plus, not just a five-star, five-star plus offensive tackle, Jordan Seaton committed to Colorado. This is wow. huge, and I mean absolutely huge, because he's the number one offensive tackle in the class of 2024. Wow. Everybody and their mama wanted this guy, but he wound up going with Coach Prime and Colorado. That's crazy. This caught That's a lot nice. of people off guard for this reason right here. It was being reported that Colorado had, quote-unquote, no chance of landing him. And a lot of people are saying too. that is because he announced his commitment was going to be Thursday. Telling me this nigga is, is, is what, 18, 19? You telling me this nigga is 17, 18, 19? In high school, this nigga got a whole arm sleeve. Damn, the nigga look like he ready for the NFL. And apparently, and allegedly, Colorado wasn't even in the top six or seven. seven. But, but somehow, somehow some way, way, he winds up committing to Colorado. Colorado. It, was it was just a weird, weird situation. situation. But, it but it doesn't matter how he ended up committing to Colorado. Colorado. He, he did. did. And you got and a lot, lot of comments, comments of people saying, saying stuff like, oh, he's, he's going to take the bag and he's going to leave and he's going to end the transfer portal and blah, blah, blah. You know how it is. It's controversial, man, it really is because a lot of people don't like it and they don't understand why the number one offensive tackle would go to Colorado. Here's what you got to say about it, quote, unquote. You claim your dog. Why not? 
that to Colorado? Why are you not helping somebody who looks like you? That was his message to other recruits that are considering Colorado. Definitely an interesting take there. Not sure why you had to bring up race in any of this, but whatever it is, what it is. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I haven't been following this recruitment too closely, but apparently a lot of people have been giving him slack for me in Colorado. Here's one of the top like comments. This is on Instagram. One of the weirder aspects of college sports is seeing grown adults making fun of 18 year olds. Let that kid go where he wants to go. And I got nearly 10,000 likes. To address that comment, I do look like he 20, 30. I don't understand what this whole weird fathom is where you got these grown ups critiquing kids and getting mad at them for not choosing their alumni or their favorite school. That's one thing on my channel you probably noticed. I don't get too caught up in recruitment because, well, I just simply don't care. I cover yeah. a little recruitment here and there if it's a big time five star or maybe. Somebody gets a big time four star, but outside of that, no, nah, you're not going to see me talk about it too much because I could care less. That's the bottom line. Here's how I view it. I would love for my favorite team, Alabama, to get every five star recruit in the nation. But if all these four and five star recruits don't want to come to my favorite school, Alabama, hey, it is what it is. I'm wishing you the best of luck. Go succeed elsewhere. I just yeah. don't get caught up in it too much. And even when kids commit to a school, I still don't care too much because we all know they're going to decommit probably in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm scrolling down here on the... I ain't gonna lie, bro. College football has changed, bro. It's all about the money. Money, money, money. It's all about that money. You gotta pay me. Then I'm coming. You gotta pay me. Pay me, and I'm coming. <laughs> Comments, and yeah, I do see some of the hate, because a lot of people are saying, I can't believe he chose him over Colorado. He's gonna regret it, and yeah, what do y'all think about that? Here's my theory on all this. I just think right now, it's extremely popular to hate on Colorado, because... They did yeah. have a bad season. You got to think about it. If they would have went 8-4 and four this year, nobody would have been commenting on this hateful stuff. That's Literally. just human nature. People love to kick a man when he's down. They're not going to kick you when you're up. I like Coach Prime, and I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. This, this Colorado, Colorado job, job is a long-term long record. I hope it works out for this kid. And on the bright side, you got to look at it from this perspective. He'll probably start from day one. If he would have went to Alabama or somewhere else, probably not starting on day one. I still, for a lot of me, though, can't believe Deion Sanders did this. And the funny part about all of it is, he wasn't lying. He told us this was going to happen. What am I referring to? Remember after a game when the offensive line played terrible and somebody, I think it was a reporter, they asked him about how they're going to fix the line and he just straight up told him, oh, yeah, don't worry. We're going to replace them in the offseason. Bro, basically, uh, Matt be great keeping it real. And Deion Sanders, it is what it is, bro. He basically going to get the others out, you know, that didn't do their job on the line. They probably going to transfer and go somewhere else. <laughs> Or whatever like that, bro. He Deion Sanders knows his son needs it. You know, his son needs a line. Uh, short door is like that, bro. He sits in that pocket, he throws the ball. If he have to run the ball, he would run the ball. But Deion Sanders knows he needs a line. So, yeah, man, I'm sorry, y'all. My allergies kicking in, bro. I love y'all. Stay swagged up, bro. I'll see you guys next video, man. Y'all get ready for NFL Sunday. It's going to be a movie.